Hi, in this video I'm going to cover how to create a one sample t-test and I'm going to go through two examples. One using the data analysis feature and the other one doing it manually using our formula here. Now let's start with a problem statement. We have factory workers that are processing widgets. The factory management states that the average widgets in the container are 65. The employee unions believe that the average quantity is higher than 65 so they're thinking they're getting shortchanged. So a sample of nine containers are taken. So we're going to have our hypothesis statements. And basically the unions is the alternative hypothesis. They're saying that there's more than 65 in their containers. And management saying, well, there are at least 65 widgets in those containers. So in Excel, we can actually use the data analysis feature. If I bring that up here, go under data, data analysis feature. This is something that you have to um, enable within Excel. You can just Google data analysis tool pack, install uh, Microsoft, and you'll get instructions. But if I click on data analysis, you'll notice that if I scroll down, we have our t-test here, but there's nothing for a one sample t-test. But there's actually a workaround for that because we can actually use the two sample t-tests with unequal variances to get around that. I'll click OK. And my input range is going to be A2 to A10, right? And I'm going to put some dummy data here. Uh, you can put zeros. Uh, we can put a bunch of 65. You need at least, uh, I think, two values to perform this particular test. So, I mean, I could put 65 and put zeros. It's just going to have another column there. And my hypothesis mean difference, well, this is 65. What we're looking at is the 65 there. My alpha is 0.05. We're using a 95, uh, 0.05 significance level. And uh, I'm not going to click labels since I, since I didn't select the labels up here. My output range will be, I'll put it over here actually. Let me put an, an I10. Or I, yeah, I10. Press enter, click OK. And now we have our values. Select these bunch of columns, double click the auto fit. You can see here, my second variable, it doesn't really uh, output anything here. I, I'm just concerned with my, my first variable's data here. And I can just call it, I can just rename this uh, one sample t-test, right? I just call it one sample and get rid of this column. So I have my one sample. And here you can see that according to our t-statistics, it's 2.40 and our critical t-value what we're saying is this is a right tail test because one of the key indicators to help you show if this is a right tail or left tail test is to look at the uh, arrow here or, or our greater or less our greater than sign. If it's pointing over here to the right, it's kind of a, a key to indicate that it's a right tail test. If it's pointing to the left, which means that our alternative hypothesis is less than that value, then it's a left tail test. Well, this is indicating it's a right tail test. So we're looking at our one tail test our critical value is 1.85, our t statistic is 2.4, it's greater than our critical value. And so therefore, we are going to um, reject the null hypothesis. So we're saying that that uh, the null hypothesis where the management stating that whatever is in there is less than or equal to 65, uh, we're going to reject that. Now, if we want to do this manually, we can actually do this manually and get to the same value as here. So how do we do that? Let's get our sample mean and we'll use average for that. Press tab. We'll average these values out. Press enter. That gives us our sample mean, which is similar to that. What is the population mean? Well, that's given to us at 65 because that's what the management states. Our standard deviation, we're going to use the standard deviation function. This is a sample, so we're going to use standard dev.s. Let's tab that and select our numbers here. Press enter, and we've got 3.04. And our count, we can just use the count function. Count the cells that contain numbers here. Of course, that's going to be 9. So now we have enough of the variables to plug into this formula. We're going to do our sample mean minus our population mean or our given mean over the denominator, which is our standard deviation uh, divided by the square root of our count. So let's do the numerator first. That's going to equal our sample mean minus our population or given mean. 
that's that value, and our denominator is going to be equal to our standard deviation divided by the square root, open parentheses, of our count. Close parentheses. And now to get my t statistic, it's going to be the numerator divided by the denominator, right? And I have my t statistic, which is 2.04, which is the same as this one. So what's my critical value? So the critical value, and we can get that from a function called t.inv. And we're going to use this one. But if you notice, this will only provide us the left tail inverse of the student's t distribution. So this will be negative. So we're going to put that into, we're going to wrap it in an absolute function later on. But let's get our arguments in there. The probability, 0.05, that's our significance level, 0.5. 05 and the degrees of freedom that is going to be 9 minus 1 right because this is student t distribution it's going to be this value minus 1 close parentheses and of course that's going to be 8 and we're going to get our 1.85 which is that so since this was a left tail let's turn it into a right tail and basically that's going to be the positive of that particular value. So then our critical value is saying, well, the t statistic is greater than a critical value, so we're going to have to reject the null hypothesis. On a further check, if you want to do a further check, you can try to get the p value. And we can get the t value by using the t distribution right tail. And x is going to be our t statistic. And our degrees of freedom, of course, it's going to be that minus 1 again. Close parentheses and we have our p-value, which is our one-tail p-value here. So that value is less than the significance level of 0.05, and so therefore we still would need to reject the null hypothesis. So that's the way that we can do a one-sample t-test in Excel. We can use the uh, data analysis feature here and kind of work it out where we're not doing a two-sample t-test and we're just putting dummy data and looking at the one variable there for that sample. Or we can go through the process of getting our mean and our standard deviation on our counts and plugging it in into our t distribution formula and getting our t stats and using the other functions here to get our critical value. And if we want to do a secondary check, we can get, your, get our p value here with this particular formula, t.dist.rt. So that's the way that we can do a one-sample t-test in Excel. I hope that helps.